Well, welcome back to the Mini Bill. This will be episode 14. Uh, this episode is concentrating on the wiring of a standalone ECU. So whether you're putting a Nissan engine in a classic Mini, or you just wire, wish to wire a standalone ECU to another engine similar to this, a four-cylinder or six-cylinder, uh, with yeah, fuel injection, then uh, stick around and stay tuned. Well, I've got to the stage in the build where I'm starting to wire the ECU into the car. Now, the one I've opted for um, is the Max ECU. It's a street version. That's the little logo. Um, it's Max with two X's. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I've been assured it's a fairly straightforward one to set up, or wire and set up, so we'll see how that goes before I uh, pass judgment on it. Um, in terms of the wiring, the wiring is very clear, really. Um, there's a wiring diagram. Again, I'll do a cutaway shot to this so you can see in a bit more detail. Um, but I've just been working through this, and the cables are all colour coded. So you have a set of cables, colour coded blue, for coils, four in the Nissan's case. Uh, but it is wired for up to six. Uh, the injectors are all colour coded grey. Um, Sensors are brown. Um, blacks are common. Uh, the sensors cables um, which need to go to the coolant, uh, cam sensor, crank position sensor and then the O2 sensor on the Nissan engine I've taken out completely and replaced it with Bosch that comes with its own cable here, very well made too I've got an adapter here so I'll wire straight into the loom um, so that's the ECU part and what I've done on this particular install is keep the Nissan loom. So the Nissan loom is, is here and what I've done, I've stripped out everything that the loom I don't need. So all I've got here is cabling now for injectors, coil packs, crank sensor, cam sensor, uh, coolant sensors, uh, throttle position sensor and that's probably about it actually. So it's quite a stripped down loom compared to what you start with quite often. So all the superfluous stuff is, is removed. Now what I'm doing to facilitate removal of this engine and also sort of future proofing things as well. So by that, what I mean is if I change this engine to another different engine or whatever with different connectors on, I needn't be overly concerned. What I'm going to do is put a cable break so the loom, the max ECU loom will end about here and it'll be terminated uh, with this type of connector here. This is a Deutsch DT series connector and there'll be a couple of these. Uh, where there be a cable break between the ECU and the engine itself. So in the event I do change the engine, or change it on the engine, to go to decide to go to the turbo route, need extra sensors, I've got the original Max ECU which I can quickly interface to through these DT connectors. The alternative is to wire it straight into the engine harness itself, so you've got hard links in here. There you go, that's the, the Max ECU street, just uh, fit under the bulkhead, and then the cabling, uh, the loom itself, that goes through a gland, a plastic uh, electrical gland, to uh, where the, um, the pedal box normally resides. So. What uh, Max have done to make the installation quite straightforward really, um, just doing the temperature, air temperature sensor just uh, here on the bulkhead. I may move this yet into an air box, but that's uh, just temporarily located potentially. But yeah, just going back to the cabling, um, you won't be able to see on film here, but each cable is actually stamped and this one just uh, simply says air um, temperature sensor and it gives you the pin number on the ECU as well so you know you've got the right cable and then the ground here, there's three grounds for different sensors uh, this just happens to be one that's connected to H1 at the ECU so again very straightforward to do really so just got to connect the uh, connector on the end and that'll just slot on there this won't be going through the bulkhead uh, brake because this is sort of a permanent feature uh, that doesn't come out with the engine so that's, uh, that stays here so at this point I'm just starting to wire the throttle position sensor and I've just got the original uh, Nissan loom or part of it here. So we've got a 5 volt supply, a, a ground and we'll have a, the actual voltage output depending on the position of the throttle um, which also is the output from the sensor here. So just three wires, I've uh, labelled those up. And then on the ECU side this is what uh, Max um, makes very easy. What you can't see on these cables, they're actually labelled up, they're printed. So one of them will be the sensor output, the black. The red is the 12 volt, uh, 5 volt in this case, um, sensor supply. And then the brown is a ground. It's as simple as that. So 
because the sensor is so close to the bulkhead, it's very easy to take off in the event of taking the engine out, just on clips. Uh, so there's no real point in having it through the cable break. I'm planning to put the bulkhead here. I'll just splice that in with a solder joint and heat shrink over. Um, that will be tied into the rest of the loom and hopefully have a nice neat loom for all the bulkhead wiring here. One area of the uh, Max ECU installation which requires special attention is the ignition system. Now, to start off with the basics, uh, Just if I just move this uh, pointer down here, uh, we've got a 12 volt supply uh, for the ignition system here. So that feeds the supply to the four coils. Now in my particular case, I've introduced a relay ahead of the two fuses here. Uh, so when the ignition's on, that powers the relay, and the relay in turn provides 12 volts up to the coil, uh, coil packs. Now the Nissan uh, installation, the ignition amplifier is part of the ECU. So in this particular case, because I've lost the Nissan ECU, and that's the whole point of this uh, standalone ECU system, I'm now having to replace that function. And what I've got or using is the Bosch 211 uh, type ignition control unit that sits essentially between the output triggers from the Max ECU and the coil pack themselves, located here as shown. So I'll just cut to another um, overall sort of schematic showing how that's uh, configured. Uh, most of which are fairly straightforward from this point forward. Uh, the ground connection, this is a brown lead here, that must go to the cylinder head. That's uh, emphasized in the uh, main handbook you get with the ECU. Uh, that's a uh, stress point. Uh, the other point is the power supply to the ECU itself. That goes onto M4, so red cable, uh, pre-supplied as part of the loom. So easy to find and easy to wire. Uh, that same supply also supplies your lambda probe as well. So that's also connected from here into the loom here as well, the red cable. And then the third point, uh, the outputs here, labeled extra output one, extra output two. In my case, I've designated one for the fuel pump relay and output two for the control of the electric cooling fan, engine cooling fan. And then the last point is this extra green at the bottom here is for your tachometer. That's an extra designated output. So again, fairly straightforward to, to do. One of the jobs, final jobs I want to do to the microfueling is change the injectors. And I've got these orange banded, which are do provide a different spray pattern than the original K11 injector. I do happen to have one here. They are interchangeable. And what I've also got is a K12 injection rail here. Single entry, which is quite important, as opposed to a feed and return on the K11. So what I've got at the moment is there's the four injectors that are still fitted to this K12 fuel rail. And what I'm going to do is clean the injectors. And what I've got is some carb cleaner here, uh, just in an aerosol. I've rigged up a pipe to the single entry point here, which will go onto the carb cleaner uh, canister. And then I've got a little test lead here, a little lead I've made up, which will connect to the, each injector in turn. And then I'll be able to fire the injectors off a battery just periodically, allowing the uh, aerosol pressurise the fuel rail here and clean the injectors. So I'll let that run for a few seconds on each one. And you'll see, hopefully, a nice clean spray pattern. As you can see, that injector's really sort of coming to life now. It's delivering some uh, good delivery. So I'll just keep doing that. Uh, it's quite important to be doing this, to do this in a fairly well vented area, because it does, it does smell quite a bit. And the other thing is not to over supply the injector. So make sure you switch it on and off quite frequently. Also I've been um, cleaning the, uh, <coughs> the K12 injector. I've just got a K11 one in this fuel rail just to do a comparison check. So I'll just uh, charge it and then spray it and see you, you'll see what the difference is. Two very different, just two jets really. When I started uh, looking at a target horsepower for the Mini, I tended to look at uh, 0-60 calculators for cars. I came across this 
website called carspecs.us. When I first started putting figures in, I was a little sceptical of the accuracy. So what I'd done is use my own road car, day-to-day -day car, as an example, which I know produces 245 horsepower. Uh, with me sat in it, it weighs about 1590. It's rear-wheel drive and it's automatic. And the North 60 acceleration figure comes out at 6.6 .6 seconds, which is about right, which developed a bit of um, competence in this particular calculator. So my target horsepower for the engine, Nissan engine, is 140 horsepower. Uh, the weight I'm estimating with me sat in the car to be about 690. Front wheel drive and the transmission is manual, and that gives an acceleration time to 60 of about 5.4 seconds. Uh, which, if it is that quick, I'll be very, very pleased. So it just shows what effect weight has. I mean, if you were to drive another 100 kilograms of the car, which would probably be quite difficult, then you can expect figures of about 4.8 seconds. In the next uh, video, the plan will be to have the engine back in here. I'm just waiting for the drive shafts at the moment, so stand fast uh, tier 4 coming to an end. I'll be able to get that done and get everything fitted. And the next, the next video will be about the programming of the ECU, initial startup and also the dyno run. So that'll be a good video to watch to see how much power this is uh, going to make. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Uh, more videos to follow. And in the meantime, uh, look after yourselves and stay safe.